So guys, welcome back to another brand new video. In this video, I'll teach you how you can set up RPCS3 right here on your Windows machine. So I'm doing a setup right now so you guys can like follow along. It's a complete process of how you can download it, how you can install it, how you can apply the patches, find the best setting for your games and stuff. So first of all, head on over to rpcs3.net slash download link. All the links are in the description, by the way. And get your build for Windows. Then next up, we're going to go to the quick start guide. I will provide a link for the firmware uh, in the description down below as well. So if you like scroll all the way down here and you will see an option called PS3 system software. So I will provide link for this page. You can just go on to this page and then simply just click on update using a computer and then click on download PS3 update right here. Next up, what we're going to do next we're, we're going to do is we're going to open the RPCS3 archive and extract it like wherever you uh, prefer. I personally recommend you to like create a cold folder called emulation and then just extract it like organize it in a way so that you can easily find it later. So RPCS3 is now extracted. Next up, uh, we're going to download the update here. And by the way, if it does not start download, right click on it and then click on save link as because sometime it does not start download when you like click on it and then you need to click on keep in the browser. So while this is downloading, we're going to wait until this is finished. We're going to click on the folder icon here and now uh, we're going to launch our RPCS3 because we're going to install this firmware and it will say something like this. Just click on show more info and then click on run anyway. Now create a desktop shortcut also click on I have read the quick start guide also uncheck the show at startup otherwise this window will always pop up on the startup. So we, we don't want that so we're not gonna do it and I'm not creating a start menu that's completely up to you. Click on continue. Now it says that missing firmware right here. So now uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick this ps3 update.pup file and then drag drop into the rpcs3 okay. That will say install firmware you can either install it this way or you can just click on file and click on install firmware here. But this is like so much easier so we're just gonna do this click on yes now let it install and it will compile some shaders as well so bear with me there so the modules are almost finished compiling as you guys know uh, this will take a lot of cpu power by the way so if your pc feels kind of like stuttery while this is happening know that your cpu basically spiked up 200 percent uh and by the way, I would highly recommend you to check the minimum uh, requirements on uh, RPCS3 page. It's right here. They have like a minimum requirement for everything. So you make sure you check this. If, if your CPU is not supported, know that you won't get like the best performance out of it. it. You should be in a recommended category. I mean, minimum you can like play it on pretty much any CPU. This will work, but know that the performance will be worst. So anyway, once you've done this, now what so we have our firmware installed okay now the next step is that we're gonna click on manage click on game patches and while this window opens up you will get the pop-up like this like new patches are available so we're gonna click on yes and then this will download like all the patches that are available there are canary patches as well and i will show you that in a separate video if you like so we're not going through the canary process uh canary patches process in this one and then click on show game on, uh, only show games owned uh, only show owned games so this way you can like hide the list and this will only show all the games that you have uh, available in your uh, pc basically now how are you gonna get the games that's that's i cannot help you with dump your own games basically but anyway once you've done this we're gonna click on manage then we're gonna go to virtual file system here now the reason i'm doing this is because uh, you see this games directory so i have a game in in a in separate directory okay in a separate folder so when i click on plus then we're gonna find our games right here and then click on select folder then this and then click on save that way you will get your games right here as you guys can see so I have a shadow of Colossus at the moment it, it, it has an update available how you can apply the update I will provide a guide in the description it, it's not that hard you just have to join the discord server for it but anyway so now this is like done so this game uh, does saying like it's playable so how are you gonna find the best setting for it it's pretty easy just you all you have to do is right click and then copy a uh, name here and then you just need to go to this website wiki.rpcs3.net and then let it open first then we're gonna click on this magnifying glass icon here and then paste the name 
make sure you like <laughs> delete some of the files you basically just need to uh, paste the name here and if it does not show up don't don't you worry about it because sometimes you just have to clear it out and then as you guys can see there's the page right here so you will find all all the settings for like different games on here so as you guys can see resolution scale so now what you need to do is let's just paste it side by side right click click on create custom configuration from either from global setting or default setting it doesn't really matter click on that now we could we're gonna go to the gpu tab then you see the resolution scale it's saying like 100 uh, percent. so uh, we're gonna find the resolution scale it's currently set 200 percent, and that's what we want so we're not gonna touching this this is good next thing is the advanced options in advanced option we're going to find rsx fifa accuracy which is set to atomic so this is the option right here you're going to set it to atomic and now it's it does have like you see it does have like a can canary patch right here so we're not going through the canary patch at the moment but if you guys want a video about that as well i will definitely uh, make one so do let me know in the comment section down below uh, other than that uh, this is pretty much done click on apply and then click on save custom configuration now we're going to apply the patches so if this game have patches you remember the la the pa game patches tab it should show over here but since it's not here that means that we are either missing an update or it's not supported by the patches so how are you going to find if like you need to update your game so if you like look here if you like you know if you expand the patches section it's not showing the serial number i have so it, this does have like 1.1 okay so we're gonna update our game for this because we are missing an update basically so copy the serial number next up what i want you to guys to do is join the discord server of rpcs3 okay you there's a program as well but i personally recommend you to join the discord server why would you want to install a third party program to like install updates so once you are in the rpcs3 server right here you will you just have to scroll down and find a channel called bot spam it's this one you see all the, all these people are basically uh, searching for different updates so now we're going to type a command forward slash psn check updates it should be this and then you just have to uh, paste your product code here how are you going to get the product code just simply right click copy info and then copy serial okay once you do this we're gonna just to like show you like this name right here for the game that you want you want you are looking for the update of so click on that click on enter and then it will give you like a download link of the update file right here so it's 8.3 mb so you're gonna click on it and then it will start downloading automatically uh, i think this does pull the update from the from the P, uh, playstation servers so this is pretty much safe and to be honest i trust uh, rpcs3 uh, for this so now the, we're gonna install the update the same way just drag and drop click on yes you can pre-compile cache if you want i'm not going to do this right now then if we like so now it's 1.1 and if we go back to the game patches here and you see the shadow of the colossus now it will be giving you like all these uh, updates right here so disable ml double a because the the wiki does says it if you like scroll right here use the disable mla patch resolution if you want to do resolution scaling so if you want to play this game on like 1080p for example because by default ps3 render at 720p you can disable ml double a i'm also disabling the motion blur i don't want extended uh fov also you guys can read over here in the notes tab that uh different what different patches does to the game uh, so we're not doing anything else now click on apply click on save also there's another game called eco you can disable enable patches for that as well but we're gonna play uh, shadow of colossus so i'm not going to do, do that so now we're gonna launch the game and it will again compile the shaders so bear with me this will this does take time especially on metal gear solid 4 this does take like around two hours if you want to pre-compile all the shaders in the beginning so how you can skip this by the way so if you want to skip this uh, shader compilation all the time you can do one thing i don't recommend this but if you are somebody who's like really impatient click uh, click on change custom configuration by right clicking on the game and then go to advanced tab and you see this option called PPUSP LLVM pre-compilation. You can disable this option and then the game will only compile shader while the new shader loads. That way you get a lot of stutters first of all. 
especially during the compilation which i think uh, ruined the gameplay experience to be honest so that's why i don't recommend this but if you are somebody who's uh, impatient go with it but anyway now i'm gonna let it compile and then get back to you once this is almost done okay so while the compilation is happening i forgot to tell you guys one more thing this is a good way of like uh, telling you guys to watch the complete uh, watch the whole video so if you like go back to the emulation tab and click on the pads icon here you can change your controller so i have a dual sense controller right here so i'm gonna choose dual sense it will automatically configure everything for you guys if but if it does not if you have like a generic controller uh, which like from some chinese brand okay you can just click on the button and then press the button to uh, map it on the controller it's pretty easy you guys will figure it out by the way one more thing guys if you face performance issues know that this uh, this emulator is still quite experimental i mean it's not it's definitely mature you can play a lot of games i personally ended god of war 3 on this i mean there are some crashes but that's the other story so it really depends on your cpu gpu is not not really a necessary thing in this you if you have like a for example if you have a 710 but a really good cpu first of all something is wrong with you but anyway so if you have like a 710 let's just say that okay and then you can play this emulator if your cpu is strong you can play games on this it's basically this emulator is completely cpu bound so we're gonna launch the shadow of the colossus now and then it will again compile the shaders for that specific game right there uh, but it, it won't take very long so that's that so now uh, this is loading up and it will compile some more uh, shaders while you are playing the game so as more the more you play the less stutter you will get so it's basically that anyway let's just let's just click on new game i don't have sound currently enabled so do, don't mind that but right here guys uh, shadow of the colossus running nicely and you can also enable the performance overlay so if you like click on this playstation or the xbox button on your controller you will get this menu go into settings go to performance overlay and then enable it you can change the graph accordingly i personally like the medium one you can also enable the frame time graph if you like i don't really like that so i'm not going to do this and there you go uh, shadow of the colossus currently running at 60 freaking fps and i have a ryzen 7 2700 by the way so this is like a really uh, budget and cpu but this game running really well and this is a ps2 game by the way it's a classic uh, like i think it, this is a remastered or something but the fact that it's working quite well is really amazing so that's it for this video guys if this video helps you out you know what to do leave a like if you like and if you don't then dislike i'm, I'm gonna see you with the with another emulation tutorial and if you have any request do let me know down in the comment section below and i will definitely try to make a video about it but anyways have a good one guys i'm gonna see you next time bye bye